And as I mentioned earlier, CBS News political contributor and Republican strategist Frank Luntz had gathered that group of 28 said to be uncommitted, undecided voters in the battleground state of Ohio. We want to give you a look and listen then to just some of their thoughts last night. Who thought Tim Kaine won this evening? Raise your hands. We only have four of you. Give me a word or phrase to describe Tim Kaine, because I want to understand what he was unable to do that Hillary Clinton was able to do a week ago. Very reactionary. Small and condescending. Trump-like. It seemed to me that Tim Kaine used the same tactics that Donald Trump used a week ago, and they didn't work for Trump. Exactly. So why would you use them if they didn't work for Trump? I think that Kaine was running for vice president to Hillary Clinton, but Pence was running for president of the United yeah. States. Who do you think performed better, Hillary Clinton or Tim Kaine? Hillary. 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 Who do we think performed better, Donald Trump or Mike Pence? Oh, Mike Pence. Pence. CBS News contributor, Republican strategist Frank Luntz joins us now from Cleveland. And uh, Frank, again, you did that dial testing with the focus group. We just heard from gauging again real time reactions to the candidates as they debated. Uh, and we're looking at some of the spaghetti strands now. So green represents Clinton voters. Red represents Trump voters. Yellow represents undecided. So to the debate we then go, Frank, last night. Uh, our John Dickerson uh, called it, perhaps for all watching, a bicker fest. It's clear that that group you spent time with last night agreed. But according to the focus group, what were the high points for each candidate? Well, they hated the fact that Tim Kaine was attacking uh, uh, Mike Pence all the way through. They did not let the interruptions. They did. They want to hear what these candidates stand for. And it was fascinating to me that the moment that they raised Social Security, and this is a lesson for moderators coming up, the moment Social Security was raised, our viewers thought, wow, this is finally going to be a debate of substance rather than personal attacks. But the high point for Mike Pence is when he criticized Hillary Clinton for criticizing Trump voters. Let's take a look. She said that half of our supporters were a basket of deplorables. It's, it, that she said they were irredeemable. They were not America. I mean, it's extraordinary. And then she laid one after another ism on millions of Americans who believe that we can have a stronger America at home and abroad, who believe we can get this economy moving again, who believe that we can end illegal immigration once and for all. So I mean, that worked for everybody, that even Hillary Clinton supporters were unhappy with the, the, the meanness coming out of the Clinton campaign. And what's interesting is of our 28 people, only one of them felt that Donald Trump had won the first debate. 22 people of the 28 felt that Mike Pence won this debate. Now, let me show you before we go on the line that did best for Tim Kaine. He talked about being a governor and he talked about the tough decisions on issues like the death penalty, our voters found that very compelling. Let's take a look. When I was running for governor, I was attacked pretty strongly because of my position on the death penalty. But I looked the voters of Virginia in the eye and said, look, this is my religion. I'm not going to change my religious practice to get one vote. But I know how to take an oath and uphold the law. And if you elect me, I will uphold the law. And uh, I was elected, and I did. It was very... And that's what's powerful. When you actually show voters something of yourself, mm -hmm. when you personalize it that way, they appreciate it. They all felt that this was a much better debate than the presidential debate. And Donald Trump can learn something here. Number one, do not interrupt the moderator. Do not interrupt the voters. And do not interrupt your opponent. Number two, give them at least one specific. Give them an example of what you're going to do on day one or day 10 or day 100. And number three, and this is probably the most important. When you tell them something about yourself, it doesn't require you to criticize your opponent. Tell them what you are for, not just what you are against. That little bit there, especially at the end, I mean, it was really the last 10 to 15 minutes where suddenly, again, as many have mentioned, this debate suddenly seemed like uh, perhaps the debate everybody had hoped it would be at the beginning of the 90 minutes. Interestingly, in, in, uh, then as you dealt uh, with your focus group in their immediate reaction, I was struck last night, uh, Frank, when we saw the mentions of tax returns. There were 10 in all uh, with, as they regard uh, Donald Trump, obviously something that has dogged his campaign, certainly in the last week or so. 
know. And it was compared by you to uh, the email scandal that Hillary Clinton has dealt with for months and months. And you simply asked the zero sum question, what's more important, emails or taxes? There were 28 people in that room, Frank. 25 say that the emails are more important. And you understand why? Because the assumption is that Donald Trump paid very little or nothing in taxes. But that's a personal issue. The assumption is that there were some serious breaches in those emails. That is a national security issue. They have, they have problems with trust in both candidates. But the problem for Hillary Clinton is that sense of there's no authenticity. There's, there's nothing real there. And the sense with Trump is that there's too much anger. There's too much bitterness that he just attacks too much. Clinton has to prove that she can be trusted. Trump has to prove that he's a decent guy that you're going to let into your living room and into your bedrooms every day for the next four years. Both of them have a different challenge, but both of them have incredibly high negatives, over 50 percent. And the last time that happened in a modern election campaign is never. Mm. <laughs> uh, and so perhaps the aftermath of this debate will carry through perhaps to Sunday when uh, the presidential uh, debate part two eclipses all things yet again. Get you out of here then on this one. I was also struck in watching you first uh, immediately following the debate, just moments afterwards, you walked your focus group through your questions and at the end you asked, ultimately though, this is a vice presidential debate, did anything you see le tonight tangibly impact how you will vote? And one person raised their hand. You did it then again here on CBSN, not 30 minutes later, and you asked that same question and more hands went up. It seemed even in that short amount of time, uh, the impact of this debate, albeit a vice presidential debate in an election cycle unlike any other, was clearly seen. Well, there are two separate questions. One of them is, did it shift your opinion on what you thought of the candidates? And there, more than half shifted, and most of them shifted to Trump. Did it change your vote? Only in one case. And in fact, the person whose vote was changed was a Tim Kaine, moved towards Kaine. So, and this is what a vice presidential campaign debate does. It sets the tone, it sets the demeanor. In essence, it's a reset for the Trump campaign and they should be very happy right now. And by the way, I wanna raise one point with you. It'll be interesting to see how Donald Trump reacts mm -hmm. to Mike Pence's basically outstanding performance because it was the exact opposite of the way that Donald Trump spoke in the first debate. Will he embrace Pence and how he performed or will he challenge it? I don't, know which, I don't know which Trump is going to show up on Sunday, but Pence proved a point. If you answer the question and you do so with policy, voters will support you. If you do so with interruptions and basically abuse, voters will reject it. And certainly uh, set about uh, perhaps settling a rather jittery base. Frank Luntz, as always, very fascinating stuff here. Very much appreciate it. Thank you. It's a pleasure.